right. Good morning, everyone. We're so excited to share with you our presentation for STO um, strategies and understanding funding pathways. Good morning, everyone. This is Mark Pickerel, our <laughs> Director of, fin of Finance, and he'll be joining us this morning as well to just jump in and share a little bit of information regarding um, scholarships and then also to provide some important information regarding TADS, our Enrollment and Tuition Management System. Today, you'll be meeting our admissions and finance team, as well as getting an overview regarding student tuition organizations, understanding how to apply for FAAS, um, who we partner with in terms of STOs in the Valley, who to contact if you have any questions, and then um, we'll leave you with some next steps. And then if you have any additional questions regarding the process, um, how it works, or just individually for your family, Mark and I are happy to schedule some individual Zoom sessions with you all as well. So, this is our admissions and finance team. So definitely know that it's a little weird to see me here, but Mark here, but also see us in this image as well. So I'm Eliana Mazel. For those of you who I haven't gotten to uh, interact with much, I'm the director of admissions. I support our families um, through the enrollment process and the admissions process, of course, um, and then also support our families in understanding scholarship opportunities and funding pathways. I'll let Mark introduce himself here. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Pickrell. I'm our Director of Finance, and I, I will support families with tuition and billing and also understanding TADS and uh, scholarships, uh, when scholarships are applied, balances, all that kind of stuff. Uh, my partner in crime here, our small army at two in finance, uh, is Chantel Gregg, uh, many of you know, uh, and she can really answer as a backup anything that I can answer also. Um, so um, please uh, contact any of us anytime and we all work um, very closely and smoothly together. So if you talk to one of us and it's really a, someone else that knows that area further, we'll kind of quarterback the issue and uh, either get you in touch or, or still get that response back to you. So uh, don't have to spend a lot of time figuring out which one to call. Just dive in and we'll work with you. Thank you so much, Mark. Yeah. So today we have some session goals. Ultimately, we want you to be able to understand the different scholarship opportunities that are available to you to feel confident in what scholarships um, your family has the opportunity to apply for, just have a better understanding of TADS and what we operate with on our ends of TADS versus what TADS can support you with. Um, and really knowing that this team is truly here to support you. We want this to be a collaborative process of understanding this. We know that there's a million different acronyms and a million different ways to, you know, say, switcher or overflow um, scholarships, but we really want you to walk away feeling empowered that you know all of the language, all of the different names, um, and really know that we're here to support you through this process. So there are four different buckets in the Arizona tax credit. We're lucky enough to be able to have this as an opportunity for our families to receive scholarships. So there's the individual scholarships, there's switcher, which is essentially when you're switching from public school to private school, but also moving from out of state to the state of Arizona. Um, and then anyone that jumps into a private school in kindergarten has the ability to receive switcher all throughout their years um, because you're starting in private education. And then there's disabled displaced, which is for anyone that's been in the foster care system in the state of Arizona. And then anyone that has an MET, IEP or 504 plan from 
the state of Arizona, and then there's low income corporate, which is specific to household incomes. And we'll get a little bit more into that as we go on in our presentation. So first is the individual tax credit scholarship. So this is available for K-12 students. There's no limit to this scholarship. Um, and STOs have the ability to consider financial need when providing this scholarship. Um, and SEOs can't solely award this scholarship based on a donor recommendation. So you're able to get folks to donate uh, in your family's name, but that's not the sole basis of awarding this scholarship or any of the scholarships that we'll discuss today, which is important to note. Um, and the cap for 2022 um, is $623 for single filers. And then if you're married filing together, that will be $1,245. So that means when you kind of think about all the work that goes into this, um, if you have a number in your mind, right, and you're asking someone that's single versus married and filing together, you kind of want to think through how many folks, right, you might want to reach out to to ask for a donation when you're thinking through what makes New Way affordable for your family. And then we have our Switcher tax credit scholarship. So Switcher, like I said, is also known as Overflow for some organizations. Switcher and Overflow are one of the same. Um, the way to think about it is switching, like I said, from a public school to a private school or switching states, right? Why it's called Overflow is because if you receive an individual donation that's over what a family that's uh, married and filing together can donate or single and filing their taxes can donate, then it goes into the switcher category. So again, it's available for K-12 students. There's no scholarship limits. Um, Sam, as an individual, they, any STO doesn't have to award just solely based on the recommendation um, and financial need is definitely looked at when applying for the scholarship. Um, and what's important to know is that you also need to have attended a public school for at least 90 days. Some other scholarships, such as the Empowerment Scholarship, have adjusted that and made an addendum to 45 days, but that hasn't been announced by the Arizona Department of Revenue for the Switzer Scholarship as of yet. It has the potential to change, um, but it is important to note that that hasn't been announced yet. In 2022, the cap is $620 for someone who's single and filing their taxes, and then $1,238 for someone who's married and filing their taxes together. So the amounts aren't too different, but there is a little bit of a difference of um, what the maximum of someone is able to donate for a switcher scholarship. And then there's low income uh, corporate scholarship. So our corporate buckets are the two where there are certain parameters to receive each one of these scholarships. So when looking at if you qualify for low income corporate, family income is really looked at here. So we say this is generally any family that makes $90,000 annually or less, um, but it also varies based on household size. So if you have any questions about what your family would qualify for based on your household size and household income, Mark and I are always happy to walk through that with you because that looks a little bit different if you're a family of four versus if you're a family of 10. So in 2022 to 2023, this upcoming academic school year, the K-8 limit is $5,900 and the high school limit is $7,700. So this is now set to increase by about $200 each year. So if you've received a low income scholarship this past year, you'll see the amount has raised, um, which is a really wonderful thing for our families. And we're very excited that the Arizona Department of Revenue has chosen to increase this scholarship opportunity each year moving forward. It's so crucial that you submit all of your financial documents to be eligible for this scholarship because if you're missing a tax return or 
a bank statement or a pay stub that they've asked for, it's hard for STOs to give this uh, award because it is based on adjusted household income. And so it's really important to submit all financial documents along with this scholarship application. And then last but not least, or it is least, but we have our disabled displaced uh, corporate donation as well. And so this is available again for K-12 students. You have to have an MET IEP or 504 plan to submit um, in this case. And so, you know, if you haven't had that from a public school or if your child has never gone to um, a public school and you started in kindergarten, received a MET, there are some ways to kind of go about receiving the scholarship. Um, and then it's important to know that this also includes any student that has been in the Arizona foster care system as well. For um, anyone that has an MET, IEP, or 504 plan, there are certain limits to certain eligibility determinations. But again, that varies from year to year. And like I shared, Mark and I are always happy to kind of go through what those numbers look like for you. And where can you apply for all of these scholarships? So this is a list of all of our partner organizations. So you can see that, for example, the Arizona Leadership Foundation doesn't accept any individual or switcher donations, but they um, do provide corporate scholarships. So they, this is an organization to certainly apply for. The deadline for Arizona Leadership Foundation is June 15th. They take that deadline really seriously. And so it's so important that if you qualify for one or both of these buckets that you send in your application as soon as you're able to. Then there's uh, APESF. So again, they have all three buckets. So you can apply to receive individual and switch your scholarships through APESF as well as disabled displaced and low income. And so when you're looking at this list, which will be sent out to you, just make sure that you're looking at each bucket that every organization um, fits under. For some strategy here, we recommend you applying to an organization um, to filter your individual and switch your award. So I would only apply, for example, to APESF or Arizona Tuition Connection for individual and switch your awards. And you'd ask folks to filter those donations through one STO. And then when you're looking at disabled, displaced, and low income organizations and scholarships, then you want to apply to each one of the organization that has access to those corporate funds. So and that's really important strategy, making sure that you're filtering individual and switcher donations through one organization and then looking at what corporate buckets you qualify for and applying to those organizations. And as I shared, Mark and I are happy to kind of go through that with you and talk through what that looks like. So we truly partner with APESF and Arizona Tuition Connection. They are really supportive of our families. I've linked the application here for you and the email address and phone number for you to reach out to in the event that you have any questions. I always recommend if this is your first time going through this process to really reach out to each organization, see which one you connect with, see which one feels right for your family and then filter donations through there. And then we also have ALF and IBE. Um, again, both wonderful organizations and important to note that ALF only accepts corporate donations on individual and switcher. So again, just making sure you qualify for both of those buckets before you go ahead and apply there. Then we have our STO. So NUE has um, the Financial Assistance for Independent Schools Student Tuition Organization. And the way that you want to apply to receive scholarships from our STO is through TADS. 
So it's important to note that we do not accept any individual or recommended funds. So if someone um, wants to donate to our STO, this would just be to support all of our students who need scholarships to make New Way affordable for them and to be here. And we don't you know, unfortunately, we just don't accept individual and recommended funds. Um, and you would want your donors to filter through that organization that you chose. That's not FAAS to filter any recommended funds. So any of those individual and switcher donations. Otherwise, it just goes into a general scholarship fund for our students here at New Way. And it truly is need based. So you can apply directly through TADS. We ask that you apply by June 15th. Um, and the reason why we ask for you to apply by then is so that if you're missing any documentation, we have a 15 day grace period to reach out to you, ask for those updated documents, and then make a plan from there. If, for example, you filed an extension on your taxes, we have a way to kind of navigate those pieces until you submitted your tax your taxes for this year. And then your required documents that you need to submit are is the completed application, a tax return, your form 1040, any W-2s, birth certificates, and then your letter from your family. This letter from your family provides any situation of circumstance that might have changed over the past year or so. It really lets us know really where your family is and how um, and in what ways you need to be supported. Most organizations that you apply to will also ask for this letter. Everyone that's reviewing an application takes these letters really seriously. And so if there is a situation, you know, maybe someone in your family lost their job or you're taking care of a loved one that was unexpected to happen this year, it's so crucial that you really communicate this with us and any of the STOs that you apply to because they really do take it seriously and they really do want to hear what you have to say and what your family is going through and really why you're at New Way and why this is so important to your family. And now Mark is going to take it away and let us know a little bit about TADS and what we can do to support you and just some tips for working with them as well. All right. Thank you, Ileana. Great tips and advice as always. And uh, so as Ileana mentioned, I'll talk about TADS a little bit. This, this thing called TADS that sometimes causes some frustration with families will review uh, some of the common areas where that happens and just try to clear clarify um, what can you talk to New Way about, what is something that only TADS can resolve with you, and just ways where uh, Chantal and I and also Ileana will try to always be a partner with you and try to make TADS as clearly understood as we can or help uh, you do that and then also minimize uh, with you the, the the fees that you're required to pay them with your agreement. Um, so let's start off with uh, billing. So uh, billing comes from is an area that some of it is generated by TADS, some of it is generated by New Way. The only bills that are created by TADS are tuition invoices. And those are created when you finalize your tuition agreement through them, you select your payment uh, method, and you'll have all those initial um, tuition invoices uh, in your account. And then throughout the year, New Way will do all of your activity-based billing. If you sign up for sports or clubs, if you do aftercare, uh, services or you go on trips, field trips and things, we'll initiate those bills. Um, and kind of I'll jump ahead to the next screen on late fees. What we'll commit to always doing with you guys is letting you know whenever we do a big round of billing. So if we put in like, you know, 100 club fee invoices, I'll send it in, I'll send a, just a quick email to those families just to let them know that they're in your account because TADS, you know, purports to do that, that they send a, a reminder out 10 to 14 days before it's due, but I've had enough families tell me that they don't receive those that we feel like we want to do it also. So hopefully you'd rather hear from two people than risk 
not knowing that there's an invoice there and then that you know the due date passes and you get late fees and we want to do everything we can to to try to avoid that um so any you know not necessarily every one off but if we ever you know do a large cycle of billing we'll always uh, send an email and let you know it's there um scholarship verification i believe you're you're hopefully always notified by the STO when you've been awarded a scholarship, but New Way can also just let you know if that's come into, if we've actually received the payment, if that's been applied to your account. That's something Chantel and I commit to always give priority. When we receive a check from an STO, we'll apply that you know, no later than the end of the next day, because we understand families want to see that reflected and have updated uh, balances. So you can check with us anytime if you're, um, if you just want to know if we've received a payment or not. Uh, navigating your account. Uh, we are aware that when a family logs into TADS, your login screen looks different than our school login screen in certain areas. And it seems like ours is maybe a little bit more robust. So it's never uh, a problem or, or we're always very happy if you just have any questions on your account on, you know, what's what the payments you've made, what payments have been paid by STOs. Um, I send screenshots to families all the time from our school account. So if anything's not making sense to you from your login, just please email me or call me or Chantel. Um, and we'll send you screenshots and kind of, you know, notate it so it's as, as clear as it could be. Um, how to download invoices. That's, those are questions that came up a lot in the first semester. We're seeing less of that now, and that's primarily from ESA families uh, that have to download and upload uh, for payment through that system. And you're probably not on this call if you're an ESA family. So I won't spend a lot of time on that. Uh, but if you, you know, if you ever do need to download invoices, we can either show you how to do that in TAS or we can just scan you the invoice either way. And then uh, reviewing charges, payments, et cetera. We can absolutely always do that in new way. We could let you know when payments were received, what charges those were posted to, any charges that, that are still outstanding. Um, yeah, those are very common questions of please just call or email um, any anytime you're not sure about something. And let's go to the next screen. And then what can TAD support? Here's a few things that only they can do if you ever need it. If you have multiple children here and you wanted a separate a billing account for each one, rather than just having them all in one family account, New Way doesn't have the authority and tests to do that. You would have to contact them um, directly for that. But you know, if we can always help contact them on your behalf also, uh, but they would be the ones that would need to do that. Uh, changes to your payment method would be like, let's say you set up your TADS account to automatically bill to your credit card, and you want to change that to be a ACH to your checking account. New Way, again, doesn't have the authority to do that in TADS. You would just need to let TADS know, um, and they can make that change. Also, if you have uh, like a change of address or something, you move, you relocate. Um, we can't go in and you're kind of your agreement was with them and there's some guidelines. We can't go in and change um, your information and their system for things like that. Uh, changes to your payment plan, that would be your tuition payment plan. Um, you can, we can change like due dates. If you wanted to change from like bill, being billed quarterly to being billed monthly, I think we would need to involve TADS for that, correct, Ileana? Yeah, but we can, you know, if you're just, if it's your, you're fine with, it's either monthly or quarterly and you just want the due dates changed, we can work with you on that. That brings us to our last point of late fees. We really want to be your partners in trying to absolutely minimize the amount of new way families' monies that go into TADS late fees. So we could try to do that through just communication and working together. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll always let you know when invoices, when a large number of invoices are put into your accounts. Um, but also, if you could just let us know if you have a tuition invoice coming due or an activity, and you just need a little bit more time, just shoot Ileana, myself, Chantal, any of us a quick email. 
we'll move that due date back from here for 30 days. So it doesn't come due and pass and then you get hit with the TADS $40 late fee. Um, we have pretty good flexibility in being able to do that. What we've had zero success with is if a late fee, a due date comes, uh, passes, and you get that late fee and it's already there, we've had zero, zero success almost in getting TADS to reverse those. So it's kind of something that you have to be in front of and keep from happening. Um, you know, just so you know, if you do get a late fee, TADS uh, so far has been fairly generous. They give one free waiver per year that either you can request or we can request for you. That's actually, I know some people get frustrated with TADS. They're actually generous in that. That's like, if we have 270 families, that's 270 waivers of fees that they allow us. We've talked to some other similar type softwares that only give 25 for the whole year um across all 270 families so that's you know we complain sometimes but we got to give them credit for credits due that that seems to be better than their competitors are offering so um but definitely just you know we'll communicate with you you can communicate with us let's just keep those from being initiated um as much as we can and hopefully see that amount get lower and lower as years go by and, thank you uh, so much mark yeah absolutely and then just to add in here, if you do receive a scholarship and that's even applied to one of your invoices, even though it's partially paid, you're still making a payment on it and you should not be receiving late fees on there. So even if you know that you're waiting for a scholarship, even if you go in there and you make a partial payment, that does help avoid some late fees we found as well this year too. And then... Next step. So where does this leave you? So one, we want you to determine what funding buckets your family qualifies for. So do you qualify for individual and switcher or just individual? Do you qualify for disabled, displaced, or low-income corporate funding? So you want to really be able to look at this presentation and kind of say, okay, so my student checks this box, this box, and this box. I apply for all four or kind of look through and see, I think I only qualify for two. Let me reach out to Mark and Eliana to verify that. Um, number two, if needed, please reach out to us and set up a meeting. We really wanna help and support you through this. I meet with many families throughout the year, um, even reoccurring meetings throughout the year to kind of just touch base and see where you are with scholarships. And that's been super helpful. And I'm always happy to do that. And Mark is happy to connect with you as well. And then make sure you gather all of the documentation that you need to apply, right? So looking at um, completed applications applications, tax returns, form 1040s, W-2s, birth certificate, letter from the family. And then we also recommend that you submit all of your applications by June 30th to really maximize your scholarship opportunities. Um, and then again, that helpful tip of making sure you filter all of your individual donations through one STO. Um, and like we shared, we'll send out that tips and tricks and strategies document to you with this presentation as well. Um, but really know that this team is here to support you through this process. We want to make this as seamless and as simple for you as possible. And we really want to work with you and help you feel empowered to really navigate the STO world throughout the year. We're here to answer any questions that you have. Thank you for listening and joining us for our sessions. We're excited that these came to life and we're also excited to continue providing updated information to all of you. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you everyone.